everyone. So yeah, it's been a while since I've made a video, pro approximately like two weeks or something. And it was because there was online classes and I was lazy at, as I always am. And it was like so long that I decided from a video that I literally had to place my whole entire setup again. But yeah, I can't make back with the video, so don't worry, I'm not quitting YouTube yet. And also, for, for the skit video that I, I want to do, I, I hope I will make it by February 1st, but don't expect anything. If I can, I'll probably like try taking some famous exam, like the Oxford Mathematician test or something. But never mind, I'm, going to, I'm still going to do something special for 2007 because it's a great night. Also, thank you guys for that. And yeah, enough talking, let's jump into today's problem. So, this problem is from the 2021 Ferma contest, which is actually a contest that we have here in Canada. And it was question 24 from part C. Well, there were like three parts with 24 questions. It was like the, there were 25 questions to all divided into three parts. But yeah, this was the second to last question on the, te on the test. And it was this one. So, we have a pair of real numbers, A comma B with a squared plus b squared being less than or equal to one fourth and that pair is chosen at random we'll assume that it is will with uniform with uniform distribution please don't make this problem more complicated than it already is and you want to find the probability that the curves no, these two parabolas y equals a x squared plus 2bx minus a and y equals x squared intersect now this wasn't the exact wording of the problem because in the actual contest, they were like, they were like, if p is that probability, then 100 p is closest to, and then you had five answer choices. But we're mathematicians here; we don't approximate. We find the exact answer. So yeah, let's get started. First of all, what we'll do is we'll make ourselves a nice little face space. That it's like I think that's a thing in some branches of physics where you draw some Cartesian plane or something that helps us translate your physics problem into a, geom a geometry problem and that's kind of the same strategy that we're going to use here. So yeah, let's say this is our A and this is our B axis. This is unorthodox notation, but just go with it, please. And now, A squared plus B squared is less than or equal to one fourth is a circle centered at the origin with radius one half. And now, what we'll do next is we'll try to find another inequality such that, well, uh, such that these two curves intersect. So we want that the y values will be equal, so the x values will be two. So well, we can set the y equals to each other. I'm losing my words. It's been a while since I made a video, as you can see. So we have ax squared plus 2bx minus a equals x squared. Bring the x squared to the other side and factor the x squared. We have a minus 1 times x squared plus 2bx minus a equals 0. And now, for this, you know, for these two curves to intersect, this quadratic, well, this will be our x coordinate for the point at which they will intersect, we will either, uh, it either needs to be the solution to this quadratic, one repeated real root, or two distinct real roots. And since to be is, always, is obviously real, that means, well, the discriminant, mean, meaning like the b squared minus 4ac part in the quadratic formula, must be greater than or equal to zero, because if it's equal to zero, we'll have, we'll have like just the b or negative b over 2a thing and if it's greater than or equal to zero well we will obviously have two real roots so that means our discriminant delta must be greater than or equal to zero because as i said if it was negative we get complex values for x which we don't want so that means this square uh, this square so 4b squared minus 4 times this times this so 4 times a minus 1 times negative a is greater than or equal to zero. And now if we expand everything, we can cancel all the force. So we have b squared and the minus cancels out, the, the two minus make a plus. So we have 
b squared plus a squared minus a is greater than or equal to zero. And now what we will do is we will add one fourth to both sides. And why does that help us? Well, this is actually the square of the quantity a minus one half, whole thing squared. And then we add b squared and this is greater than or equal to one fourth. And in, in the case where we have an inequality, this is just the circle centered at one half comma zero and with radius square root of one fourth, which is one half. So that means in our phase space, it'll look a bit like this. Yeah, kind of. Okay, so now we have our two regions, but now we need to consider like the inequality times. So it is inside this region right there, a squared plus b squared equals one fourth because it's less than or equal. So we are inside of this, but we're outside of the second circle because it's greater than or equal. So we're everything inside. So it must be inside the first circle, but outside the second circle. So that means it corresponds to this region right here, which I'm shading in black. And now basically all that is really left is to find the ratio of the shaded area to the area of the full circle. And that will be the probability that we are searching for. So to do that, our area that, that we want will be, as I said, the full circle. So it will be a circle with radius one half, obviously. And then minus, well, things, obviously. So we have, if we draw some radii over there, hold on, this will take some time. So grab some, a cup of water, if, if one reading, please. Okay, so we know that this distance is one half and these two circles have the same radii of one half. So that means we have two equilateral triangles. So we'll have two equilateral triangles with side one half to consider. And then here we have four kind of, I forgot the exact terminology, but it was like circular segments or something. I I forgot, I, I yeah, I, I forgot. It was so long that it's time my video that I forgot my mathematical ter terminology. That's so great. Okay, so we have four of those. So we have, well, this kind of shape like this, and it's part of a circle, well, a circular arc, where the radius is one half, and the angle right there, since it's an equilateral triangle, it will be pi over three. And now, here's the thing. To calculate this area of this shape, so, like, let me just draw this again over here. So yeah, this is one half, one half, pi over three. And of course, by like, this is, this is an equal triangle, this will also be one half. But then, since we're calculating this, it's equivalent to calculating the whole sector, like this whole part there. Hold on, this is a bad circular sector, this is a better circular sector, so this one half, one half, pi over three. And then we have to subtract the equilateral triangle because yeah, if, we, if we cut this part off from the circular sector, we'll have the part that we want. And now what we can basically do is we can substitute that in since we already have a equilateral triangle term in our formula. So that means here in this parenthesis, this will be so we'll have two equilateral triangles and then plus four sectors and then minus four equilateral triangles. So we'll have negative two triangle and this is a sector. I know they look kind of the same, but trust me, they aren't. And then we can distribute the negative sign to get, okay, so our area, our area will be a circle with radius one half plus two times the area of our triangle with 
sides one half, equal triangle, and then minus four times the area of a circular sector, well, pi over three, the angle, and the radius is one half. And now all that is left is to calculate this. So here we have pi times one half squared, or pi over four, pi over four, and then here we have two times, and then the area of an equilateral triangle with side length s is s squared times the square root of three over four, so two times the square root of three over four times the square root of s, so one fourth. And if we calculate this, we get square root of three over eight, and then minus, so we have four times, and then the area in, of a circular sector is one half r square theta, where r is the radius and theta is the angle, so we have one half r squared, so one fourth, times pi over three, so when we calculate this, we get pi over six, because the one fourth cancel, so we have pi over four plus square root of three over eight minus pi over six, and pi over four minus pi over six is pi over 12. So we have pi over 12 plus the square root of three over eight, meaning that our probability, uh, our probability, which we'll call P, will be, well, our area of this shaded region divided by the area of the whole circle. So we have pi over 12 plus square root of three over eight all over the area of the whole circle, which is, as we found earlier, pi over four. And now, all that is left is to make it make it nicer. So, pi over 12 over pi over four, pi is gonna start, so we get four twelve, so one third. And then plus, okay, so square root of three over eight over pi over four is four over pi square root of three over eight, so four over eight is one half, so we have square root of three over two pi. So overall, our probability that this thing holds is one third plus Square root of three over two pi. So yeah, this was this wasn't too hard. Although probably on the contest it would be like it would be hard. It's the second last problem. It, it's like you wouldn't do what to know. Or you wouldn't know what to do on the contest. But yeah, this is a pretty fun problem overall. So yeah, this video. Thank you for watching the video. And yeah, bye.